Well, hello all, and I'm back. Yes, I'm back with a handicapped speaker, but Nightmare Ball of One right here. Yeah, he's he can only have here because I don't know. He doesn't have the nice, you know, skull candy headphones like me, I guess. Oh God. Hey, I got my cheap. I got these suckers for six bucks. Now, you said you had Beats by Dre. I'm done. I'm just no. getting up and leaving. <laughs> no, no. Target on clearance. Trust me, folks. You live near Target and you want cheap electronics, go check out their clearance stuff. You'll find some good stuff sometimes. But that's kind of sad. That's Anyways, a whole other video. Yeah, that's a whole other video. Where to find cheap shit. Anyways, we're going to come back. We're going to do what we did last time. We're going to talk comics again. Because we like talking comics, and we might as well record it. So, there we go. So, I have a question for you so we can talk about something we I think we both read. Oh, okay. You read Artifacts, right? Of course. Of course. Okay, so we can talk about that, because we both read it. <laughs> that, that book is great. That book is beyond great. I love that book. The book makes me happy. Um, what's his name? Stephen Sajic? Yeah. I, say? I think that's I, how you say his name. I think, I think that might be how you say it, but I never know for sure. So, Did you see the panel, panel with the Washington Monument? Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Did, did, did you see how it reflected off the... That was crazy. I've never seen a reflection drawn like that, ever. Ever. He's insane. I mean, there's no that, way to put it. Oh, my God. The the art in this book, people, like it's like the fu- it's like the future of comic books. It's kind of like when you saw McFarlane back in the eighties. He was like, "This is the future." That that's how you feel reading this book. Like the the art itself, is crazy. <coughs> it's it's di- it's digitally painted in a way that well, usually when you see digitally painted stuff, you it looks very Alex Ross, you know, like. I think that would be fair to say. Yeah, I would agree with that. You know, they try to look like this. Looks nothing like Alex Ross. This not at all. And, not at all. And I would say everything people hate about Alex Ross, i.e., everything's very stoic, and you know, there's not a lot of movement. Yeah, a lot of people say that they, uh, when he draws people, they don't have like emotions on their face. Yeah, like, they're, they're, it's it, the pictures are pretty, but there's you know, there's nothing there. I, I totally disagree, but you know, a lot of people say that. But that's definitely not the case with that. You can't say that about this stuff. I mean, it's. Oh it's just the effects he uses and yeah it's i mean there's stuff that if you if you read it you'll you'll go through it and you'll read it and then you go back and you just kind of look at the pictures and yeah, that's what i do every issue and and you notice stuff i mean just little 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 things you know and then also it's written by ron mars so it's not like it's Consistent. I've never read anything bad by this guy. Yeah, I, I, I haven't either. I've, you know, I, I have full faith in him. He, he, even his so-so stuff, I think, is pretty good and better than than a lot of people's stuff. So, but um, yeah, and this issue uh, was a brand new story arc, and me, we have both talked about artifacts, and I would definitely say if you are curious about reading it, I would actually read the. First, um, <coughs> I'm trying to think which one it is. I would say go read um, Firstborn is what I would say go read. I would agree with that. Because I, I read that first because if you try to read Artifacts, you know, you, you're going to get issue – if you get the, the trade, you got issue zero, which was done by the same team. And then you don't get the same art team until issue 14. So go read first, um Firstborn, which also happens to set up pretty much everything that happens, so it's not like you're reading something that didn't happen when they rebooted it. It really does have a lot to do, and, and there's some stuff in there that's just amazing. The way he does the darkness stuff is insane, is all I can say. This this book is great. Like, yes, this, but, but, like, but we, we didn't even talk about the story. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, the, 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 what happens in this book is, if, if you haven't read it, you have Tom Judge, who he is an artifact bearer. He has the Rapture, which gives you the gives him the ability to free people from hell. And, and he he's hold on. We have to admit, we have to explain. He's the only one that remembers how things used to be. Yeah, yeah. That and he can turn into a big hulking thing that we're not quite sure what he can do yet. Um, 
Um, he this was was a character who was introduced long ago. Well, not that long ago, but during the Paul Jenkins run on uh, Darkness is when he was introduced, and Jackie went to hell. And um, he is a fallen priest, and he in this universe now works for the FBI, doing odd cases that deal with the supernatural. And he has a assistant, Tilly, who is kind of a wizard, except she uses math. Would that be a fair? Yeah, I would say she's like a. You ever seen Full Metal Alchemist? Is like that type did. Yeah. Like she bases everything in math. She can do math equations and you know figure things out. So uh, in this issue, they're both investigating at the uh, Lincoln Memorial, which is talked about the Washington Memorial. It takes place in Washington D.C. at the Lincoln Memorial. Somebody was killed. Their heart ripped out. Um, so and it was like a, a a ritual type deal. Like it was like symbols and all sorts of shit on the ground. Yeah, and. And so it's basically the story of that, and then at the end we get we get demons, which is always fun and and cool. So good issue, good good starting off point if you want to check it out. But yeah, this book is I, I can't recommend this book enough. It is awesome. Just for like even if whatever, even if you don't like comics, whatever. If you like seeing pretty drawings. <laughs> Like, oh my God! That like that that Washington Monument panel panel it just stuck with me. It's it stuck with me since I read this man. It was that was crazy. Yeah, he does an amazing. Another book I, I would say to pick up too is Angelus that they both did, which is which is pretty good. Though that's kind of there's a lot of backstory to that which isn't in that book, but it's really pretty and and done well too. So there you go. So yeah, yeah. It, I, I hope he like listens to these videos and stuff because that dude's art. Like, if you hear this, your art, <laughs> <laughs> man. He's on Twitter, and and then you, yeah, I know. You usually I don't even care about art at all, but the, like you know, I mean, I'm, I'm not gonna say I don't care if it's passable, whatever. Like you know, I'm not the type of guy that would get off a book because you know art's not top level stuff. But this is. <laughs> like if it's noticeably good, you know you, you gotta say something, you know. Yeah, agreed, agreed. So that was something we both read. What was something you read? Oh, uh, you want me to go first? Yeah, I'll go um, first. Uh, well, <clears throat> I want to talk about a little bit Captain America nineteen. This is the last issue of uh, Ed Brubaker's run, and um, this was everything I wanted it to be. To be honest with you, it was like kind of like. The, the 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 premise of this issue is that Cap, you know, all, all every story arc is done that Brew Baker has did or whatever, and Cap goes and visits this guy. If you remember when Cap got frozen, the government tried to recreate Captain America. <laughs> you know that, right, Josh? Yeah, they yeah, tried yeah. to do it, yeah, like a few. T- and he went to go visit one of the guys that, uh, you know, tried to do what he did, but then he got injured really badly. And, you know, it was just, you know, it, it, it's like they said the guy would never be able to walk again. It's really sad. And, like, he, you know, he just tells him, he's like, you know, you can go home now, soldier. He was like, I'm back. And it's like it's like right after he gets un- unthawed, you know what I mean, this issue. And he's like, uh, you know, I'm back. You can go home. Um, I, I appreciate everything you did, but now I understand. Like, it, it's just, it's, I ain't going to lie. By the end, I was in tears. And, like, Ed Brubaker, he, he had, like, this little, this little, um, this little thing at the end pretty much explaining well not explaining but like summing up his run on cap and what it meant to him and things like that. i ain't gonna lie i was in, i was in tears like like legit girl tears like snot was coming out my nose i was crying so, like this is this is this is a like real shit if you even if you hadn't read any of his run just read that issue like that that is that that's such an emotional book. Like I really, 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 really like that. If it wasn't for artifacts, it probably would have been my best. Like you know, the art and artifacts is just. But yeah, if it wasn't for that, <laughs> this would be like you know, my issue of the week. Like without a doubt, it was. It was well, I don't know, I don't know, but it was uh, that was that was amazing. That so was is amazing. So is it is it. Is it like kind of like the story where they introduced the Black Captain America? I can't remember the name of that story. Oh, you talking about a? Uh, uh, I forget the name. Um, I mean, not not really, not really. It's because really. you know it's just a it's just a one off, you know. So it was yeah. like, 
No, but it, it's it, that that story is amazing. Good, 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 good. Okay, I will go. Um, I will. Speaking of Mr. Brubaker, I do read a book that 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 he does. Believe it or not, I know that's really hard for you to believe, but what? What? That I read a book that he does. I mean, which one? <laughs> which one? Fatal. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, okay. That is a shock. Yeah, okay. So, so Fatal, if you, this <coughs> is a book by Image that Ed B. Ricker does with Sean Phillips. Um, this is awesome in all sorts of ways. Um, what this is, is this is kind of him taking all sorts of, like, pulp noir and other things and kind of mixing them together with horror. Um, you've got a, a main character who she has some sort of past and men literally fall for her and become addicted to her. And that's kind of the premise of the story. And, and the, the main story is this guy who's trying to figure out who she is. Um, he is the inheritance. He gets an inheritance from a, a friend of his father's who is a writer and wrote a story that these people are looking for she saves him from it and there's a lot of him trying to figure out who she is and also kind of the story of her the first story i think took place in the 40s um this current story takes place in the 70s in hollywood uh you've got a b movie actor who's kind of fallen for her trying to rescue a friend of his um who is kind of in like one of those 60 cults like type thing. Think, um, think the Manson family, except worse, I would say. And, um, <laughs> yeah. And, and him try them trying to outthink them. Um, the main villain called the Bishop is from the first, first run. I definitely would recommend everyone trying out the first run. Um, there's also, if you get, uh, if you don't get it digitally, um, there is actually, you can actually get a floppy or you actually get the trade. There's actually stories in the back of the stuff that influenced a lot of this stuff. So as far as the stories go, so that's, that's pretty interesting in my opinion. I got the first one because it was very HP Lovecraft-esque. And as I've said, I think I've never seen one of these videos. I love that sort of thing. And, uh, that was very much what this is. And it, it's very good. Um, it's a very different type of story. A very crime noir, but um, I really like it, and I would I would definitely tell everyone to to go check it out. So there we go. Brubaker is is greatness. That dude, I love that guy. Like he was uh, I, I met him a few years ago. That dude is that dude is awesome. Not even just as a writer, he's just an awesome person. Just, I love that guy. Well, CM Punk is a big fan, so. <laughs> but you, what does that really say though? Because you know people yeah. say CM Punk is a jerk. So yeah, <laughs> so, he also he's all, who's he? Brubaker and who's the other guy? He's 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 big. Scott, Scott Snyder. No, he's big on someone from Marvel that I'm not big on. Not Miller. Yeah, Miller. Me? No, no. Is you it sure? Bendis? I think he's big on Bendis. No, I, I, I think he's a be. Bendis guy. I think. I don't know. If anybody knows, put it in the comments. So there it's we go. C CM Punk likes comics. That makes yes. him awesome. Yes, that's why he does. If though, if you ever notice when he does his entrance, I know you've noticed he does the clobber in time, which is of course from the thing. So <laughs> all right. Um, next, All Star Western thirteen is Jonah Hex. I'm going to read it. I don't care what he's in. I don't care what he's doing. It's my boy. And uh, this is great. This is um, it, they, they did this storyline where this this clown is like this is like the precursor of the Joker. Like it's like this this psychotic clown that came from the circus, and like the ringmaster of the circus is helping Jonah and uh, Tallulah Black collect this bounty on this clown. And like this clown is like he's slaughtering people and things like that. It's it's really cool. It's kind of like you know because you know if you don't know, uh, this takes place in the 1800s. And the clown acts just like the Joker. It's kind of like the precursor to the Joker. It's really cool. I really, really like this a lot. Cool, cool. A lot. So I have a question about this, that series now. I know when it okay. started, it wasn't just about Jonah Hex. So is it now basically just Jonah Hex? Um, 
it, it's kind of like a it like like jo- Jonah, you know, he's always been a main character, but like mm-hmm. it's kind of like a it's kind of like a um Jonah Hex and Friends. <laughs> to be honest okay. with you. Because right. to cause to Lou, you know to Lou Black she's in it a lot. I know Batlash was in it when it first started, you know. So it's kind of mm-hmm. like you know a lot of people. Yeah. Okay. But the the main the main focus is still Jonah though. So. Okay. Because I know it was supposed to. They they said it might be an anthology, and then I'm like, eh. But Jonah Hex is in every single one of them, so you know. <laughs> so it's you know, like Spider Man and his amazing friends, except with Jonah Hex. <laughs> <coughs> I can I can see that. I can see that very, yeah, very well. So, um, a book that you were just talking about a while ago that you have not read that I will talk about, but I will, I will try to make a spoiler free because you've not read the, but I finally did get caught up on Cargo of Doom, the Rocketeer. I always, I, I've read the first two. two. I haven't read the third one yet. I'm a big, 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 big Rocketeer fan. Um, I have been, I think since, Sometime in the late '80s, I guess I read I read a Rocketeer book and just fell in love with it. I, I liked the kind of it just it was something very different at the time because you didn't have. I think a lot of time now you have some of that throwback to the '50s or throwback to the golden age of comics, and this was very much that. And with you know some other stuff added to it, and it didn't help that you know one of the lead characters is Betty Page and. So, <laughs> um, and most people have probably seen the movie. So yes, Betty in the movie is supposed to be Betty Page. They kind of toned down some of the her a little bit, so it wouldn't be Betty Page per se. But yeah, she's supposed to be Betty Page. Yeah, come um, on, that's a family movie, Josh. I know, <laughs> but um, but uh, the story goes. I mean, if you don't know. If you don't, by any chance, know what the Rocketeer is, the Rocketeer is really basic. Guy finds a jetpack um, before World War II. Um, I'm pretty sure this – I think this story takes place before World War II. A lot of the stories take place – like some take place during World War II, some place take before, some place – some take place after. So Yeah, sure I what, think this is like one of the early early yeah. Rocketeer-like stories, I think. Um, and it's, it's done by – by the way, it's done by Mark Wade, just just to throw that out there. So, uh, and he did some stuff before. They just they did uh, they've done two um, Rocketeer adventures. Yeah, great shit, great yeah. shit. Where they got all sorts of. I mean, you had Wade on this. You had Ron Mars. I think did one of the did a story in it. Um, Kurt Busick did it. You had good art in it. I mean, it was it was good good stuff. Um, and it seems like guys really want to do it. But um, basically, the Rocketeer is this. Guy finds a rocket pack in the 1940s um, or sometime before World War II, so maybe the 30s, and uh, uses it to become a the Rocketeer. And he flies around and basically think of a guy being a superhero with a gun flying around with a rocket pack. That's the Rocketeer. So, in a nutshell. But in this uh, series... Um, he basically gets throated into helping some guy, or not helping, but um, trying to find out, basically taking on a, a group that you don't really know what the deal is with them, um, and their leader is the master, um, and they have, uh, they're bringing a cargo to L.A., um, perhaps new, by, or to New York, and the stories take place in L.A. They've stopped in L.A. on the ship that they're on, um, and it's all about kind of the rock. They're trying to stop the cargo from getting to to New York, and it's really good. It's a lot of fun. It's one of those books that you know is a lot of fun. I don't think it's going to change the comic book industry by any stretch of the imagination, but uh, it's a fun, fun book, and I would say ref- definitely recommend checking it out. So there you go. It's one of the most fun books I've read all year, so I recommend it like wholeheartedly. I hadn't read the third one yet. Thank you for keeping the spoiler yeah. free, Josh. But <laughs> uh, this is my last one from last week, uh, and the last one of the series, which makes me sad because now, well, actually, it makes me sad and happy because now I never have to support this man again, and that's Invincible Iron Man five twenty seven. Matt, Matt Fraction is no longer writing Iron Man, which to me means he's irrelevant. 
<laughs> like, like uh, this is um, this was great. Though. I won't lie. This, this, this whole series, <laughs> to be honest with you, minus like a little small piece of it, was like it was great. You know, and I won't lie. You know, like I I did not. I say this a bunch. I did not like the character until the first movie came out, and I read the first trade and I was like, okay, I'm sold. And then he just kind of been building off of everything from that and then the the arc that just ended had the mandarin in it and uh it was like the first time he was well, second time he's ever appeared in the series you know since fraction's been writing it and it was like this big story arc how uh the mandarin had all of uh tony's enemies like under his control making a doomsday weapon and holding the holding the earth hostage and things like that. it was just it was just really it was, it was a big payoff you know what i mean they did this thing where um uh without spoiling it but um Justine Hammer was kind of like uh, the Mandarin's lover, and they had like a child together. But you know, like, uh, and the, and the thing was is that uh, she she was um she was trying to get the adoration of her father. You know, although uh, she didn't really agree with everything he did. And there's a nice little moment at the end. We find out something we didn't know before, and then uh, something happens at the end of this issue that is like. Just one of the biggest payoffs of the whole series, and then you know it's, it's just you know it's good that everything worked out for Tony in the end because you know I know it's comic books, I know it's Marvel, you know, and I even as Marvel, it's comic books. When does the hero ever lose? But a couple times it looked like he might. <laughs> so you know it is you know this this was really 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 good. I won't lie. And now I can just go back to not supporting this guy at all because he's pretty much terrible minus the series. So. Yeah. <laughs> so, so since you you brought up Iron Man, I'm taking it you've seen the trailer. Oh yes, oh yes, I have. <laughs> oh, oh my god. Oh, oh my god. Okay, start talking because you're already. Um. You're already the, guessing. The uh the the cool shit is the extremist thing at the be at the very beginning. Like I want to just tweet Warren Ellis. So I'm like they're doing it. <laughs> like it was cool like like did you see the head just fly out i was like oh my god they're doing extremists this is extremists on the big screen i love that story if y'all don't know that's uh my second favorite like one of my like one of my favorite marvel stories period i love that i love that story because it is very bold because like it you know warren ellis is weird like this is weird he's weird but he t- <laughs> like you know he, he he took a character that has by all means, would you say have been normal for like the past like fifty years? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. And, and then he he gave him a superhuman element that really didn't change him that much. You know, what I mean, it's just really cool because like I love that story, and they're actually doing it on the big screen. The Mandarin is now going to be. A, I'm I'm Josh. I'm so excited. I'm I'm so excited. So excited. But are you glad that they waited until they could introduce him and it means something instead of? Yeah, instead of just doing it, because fans wanted the Mandarin in the first movie. Is well, I mean, I mean, in truth, the they did call the whatever with the, the terrorist the group, group the Five Rings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that was like planting the seeds, you know. Yeah, you know. So, so, and yes, I I saw it. I really liked it. Um, it was odd because Ben Kinsley being the Mandarin is kind of weird because it sounded nothing like him. <laughs> I was like, huh? But when I saw him, I was like, I was yes. Like, yes. I was like, well, and I knew that's who it was supposed to be, and I'm like, that sounds like nothing like him. Um, so it'll be interesting. I'm, I'm curious what how they're going to go about it. I also like his little line about when he's talking to his little subjects, and he goes, "She, what is it? What does he say? Followers? I, I can't remember something." But then he says, "Sheep." He yeah, yeah, yeah. Sheep. He calls. That was them. great. That was, was great. Like, I was like, yeah, they pretty much got that right on the money. So, so yeah, and and the which is the what what's because you're the like you're the Iron Man person, the 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 U.S. armor. What armor is that? The, the Iron Patriot thing. The yeah, is that the Patriot? Mo- mo- most of yeah, most of the time, like whoever wears it, but it looks kind of like the War Machine armor. I, I know they said. James is going to be wearing it in the movie, but I don't think he's ever wore it in the in the comic book continuity. I mean, I only know two people that ever wear it. One was Norman Osborn, so. <laughs> well, he can't exactly use Norman Osborn, so that doesn't I, work. I, I don't know, but that that man, that I'm so excited, so very excited. Didn't think I would be, but I'm 
off the charts excited. Good, good, good. Well, I will, I will. The other thing that I read the this last week I got caught up on um, was, and we kind of talked about it last time, was uh, crossed. Uh, Wish you were here. Which is the crossed free? It is free web comic. If you go to avatarpress.com, you can actually or cross. I, I, I didn't know that. Yeah, cross.com. It's bi-weekly, so I believe. I believe it's bi-weekly. Um, I know cross. Is it bi-weekly? I know cross. Badland is is weekly. Um, yeah, it's weekly. The web comic is weekly, and then cross Badlands is bi-weekly. So you can get cross stuff a lot. Um, but anyways, it's up to chapter uh, 22, 26. They're on chapter 2, or they're volume 2, chapter 3. Uh, the first volume had 22 chapters in it. <coughs> um, if you don't know what Crossed is, okay. Crossed is, I don't want to call it zombies because they're not really zombies. It's basically, people get... It's more like, um, more like, uh, what's six, nine, uh, 30 days, 28 days later, 28. Yeah. 28 days later. It's more like 28 days later where people aren't really zombies. They just get like super rabies, I guess. And you call it cross because their face gets this red cross on it. And basically they go insane. Um, they rape, murder, rape, murder, murder, rape. All of that stuff. Um, do sick and so, twisted sounds shit. like an all ages book, yeah. Yes, it's definitely not an all ages <laughs> book. I mean, there's, there's, this is um, Garth in it. This was Garth Ennis's version of doing, you know, zombies in a lot of ways, but um, which is the first. And I really like. I think the thing I liked about Crossed, where I don't like a lot about a lot of zombie things, is first of all, it's completely whacked and, and messed up. And I think to enjoy it, you do have to be kind of funny in the head. I will admit that, but also <laughs> the fact that it, there's it's as so far the series you've not had, um, and I'm not caught up on Badlands yet, but um, the first series before you got um, the Wish You Were Here before we get to the web comic which came out before Badlands, uh, the the cast continually changed and there were different stories and there were different kind of stories and you had a story for example, um, Psychopath where you had a psychopath who was one of the survivors and all that that kind of entailed, which was which was a very demented story. But um, Cross Wish You Were Here basically follows one character um, and kind of him and a bunch of survivors. And it's, it's probably the closest thing I would say to uh, Walking Dead as far as Cross goes, as far as the story, because it is a continuous... You know, like I said, you're, you're at chapter... 26 or 20, yeah, 20, 13, 14, or 25, um, all together, and it's basically the same characters, um, though now they have, they have, they're, they're now exploring the world where before they were on this little island, and they had kind of, they were hiding out on this little island, and, and it's kind of that. There's some demented stuff in this, but I, I definitely go check it out, um, like I said, cross comic.com is where you can find it um and it's 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 definitely i definitely would say check the first volume out see what you think of it um if it intrigues you to keep reading so there we go i, I would definitely say the entire cross universe is definitely an acquired taste i know oh, yes. some people i know some people they find it kind of offensive Kind of, <laughs> kind of. I mean, uh, like, like I, I, I don't get it though. You know, I, I just think it's you know over the top. Like, you know, I don't, I don't, well, I don't see what's offensive. That's just me. Yeah. Maybe I got thick skin. I don't know. But. Maybe. I mean, there's some. As as I saw in an interview with David Hines, because David Hines getting ready to do a, uh, I think on Badlands. I think he's going to do a, a, a story. Um, as one of the guys said, in Cross, there, you see things you will never be able to unsee again. <laughs> <laughs> that, that sounds like preacher back in the day. <laughs> it, it, it's, like, it's, it's, it's very much, you know, you can tell that Garth Ennis created it and people have kind of taken him and gone with it. So there you go. You see things you can't unsee. That's funny. 
Um, so what, we're on this week now, right? Because <laughs> I'm done with last week. Yeah, I guess. Um, I mean, do you got any more from last week? Um, no, you can go. We can just we can skip around. Uh, it doesn't. Oh, okay, all right. Well, from this week, I got Transformers more than meets the I ten. I I'm I'm so confused because maybe I missed something. I don't know. I've been reading this since it started, but uh, when did these characters? When did they end up back on? Like when did uh, uh what's the name um uh, uh Cup and Ironhide and all of them end up back on Earth? I didn't I didn't know that happened. Like I mean I don't I didn't, maybe I missed something, but um you know this, this is cool. You know I I just feel like they're kind of going in circles now. I feel like this is like kind of a soap opera. Like, you know, they, they're they doing this, this, this thing with R.C. and, you know, kind of like her, this, she's like struggling because she has feelings for someone. I'm not going to ruin it because it's kind of important. But like, you know, it's it, like, you know, I'm like, oh, I don't need to come on now. These are these are robots, man. <laughs> That's how I feel about that. But, you know, but the original, it is in the original series. She had like, you know. But but I I know that but you know it it if it, honestly it feels soap opery Josh it does oh, and it's just okay I just it, I like it's it's like it's too much of a focus you know it, it should be like a sidebar you know what I mean all right and and, it, and then not only that I feel like they kind of lost sight of of what's going on mm-hmm. after the events of chaos you know the thing was is that you know let's find out who survived what happened let's get everyone back together you know Optimus plays a big role in this um. And, you know, he, he's like, he's really cold to everyone now. It's just, you know, it's it's a lot of interesting things going on. Like, he's, because he's acting really different. Because, you know, after, especially after what happened. If y'all know what happened in Chaos, I'm just going to ruin. Um, He had to pretty much wipe out all life on Cybertron to to defeat this monster that was going to swallow the universe. So he had to wipe out all life on Cybertron. Now the planet is dead again and they're rebuilding. And like, uh, cause, he, cause if y'all don't know in the IDW universe, they actually, um, they actually, uh, fix Cybertron. Like, you know, cause you know, in most, in most media, when you see Transformers Cybertron, the, the wars already happened, you know, the planet's dead or whatever. Well, they actually revived the planet and then he had to just, you know, kill it again. And I trying to rebuild everything, but, um, this is, you know, it's, it's good though. I, I feel like the other series are a little bit better though. Robots in Disguise, I feel like it's a little bit better. And uh, you can even argue that the, even though I don't really like it, the um, the the relaunch one, the uh, regeneration one, that you can argue that's probably better too. It, it you know, it, it's it's good though. It's just random as hell. Okay. That's how I feel. And I like the art too. The the art is consistent through and through. I hate the one thing I don't like though is uh, quick. This is just a nitpick. I feel like that, and Josh, I bet Josh is like, why are you reading this? You got so many complaints. <laughs> but, uh, like, the one thing I don't like is that the, the robots are, like, in scale. They don't they don't look as huge as they should. You know, in the other, and in, which is weird because in the other series, they do, but in this one, it's, they don't. It's, it's strange. I understand. No, I can understand that because I read, I read G.I. Joe comics for ever. So, I mean, ever. <laughs> Man, I think I think I've <coughs> I I think I stopped reading. I think I stopped reading the Marvel series at issue one hundred. That was long, but that was that was at least twenty issues after it became bad. Um, let's see, I read the IDW series when or the Devil's Due series when it started, um, and then when they went down and and it went to IDW. I read some of their stuff. I read both of the Transformers G.I. Joe crossover that Devils Do and Dreamwave did. Uh, so, oh, that, that's I remember that. that. That's that's cheesy fun right there. Yes, that is. Che- well, the 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 Devils Do one, I think, is is cheesy fun. The Dreamwave one, which is oddly enough the one most people have never read, is actually. Not cheesy, it because it takes place during World War Two, and really, it's, yeah, it's awesome. The art in it is amazing. It is it is something to see. I, I would definitely recommend. It's hard to find. You might have to you might have to find it by other means, but it's definitely <laughs> worth it. It's, 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 it's because it's it's Dreamwave, and finding Dreamwave stuff isn't necessarily the the easiest thing to do. Um, but you know. It's yeah, it's definitely worth checking out because it, it doesn't look like the Dreamwave. 
uh, Transformer stuff that looks all cartoony. It's it's very um, Jay Lee esque, I would say. Oh, okay. As far as art, it's it's different. It's it's not what you expect. And hey, you know that's my boy. So yeah, okay. Well, there you go. But um, yeah. But anyways, um, let's see. Speaking of GI Joe, I actually did pick up a GI Joe comic. Whoa. Two, two Whoa. GI Joe, two GI Whoa. Joe, two GI Joe comics. In fact, um, the GI Joe Danger Girl crossover. Oh, I saw that. How is it? It's it's. If you are a GI Joe fan, and you are a fan of Danger Girl, it's very good. If you yeah. are just a fan of Danger Girl and not of G.I. Joe, I would say it's probably – you'll probably be scratching your head going, what the fuck? And if you're just a fan of G.I. Joe and not of Danger Girl, pretty much the same thing because um, they basically just kind of throw the characters out there and – which I think most people know most – you know, generally the G.I. Joe characters, <coughs> the Danger Girl characters – not so much, I, I would think. Um, but this does have that. It's okay. I, I would say definitely. I got the first two issues just because they were there and I wanted something to read type of thing. Um, the uh, the art is uh, is pretty good. Um, I think this is the guy that does the Danger Girl art, which is very... Mm, it's very Campbell-like. I would say it's not Campbell, but it's 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 very much in that that vein, if you know what I mean. Kind I got of, you. Kind of cartoony, you know. It, it's very much like his stuff, without being him, without being that good. Um, but it's 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 definitely it might be the guy that inks it though too, and and the way they ink it to make it look like that. But um, it's it definitely has that look to it. Um, it's pretty good. Basically, the story is. That uh, who is it? Uh, Flint and Scarlet get shot down uh, and captured by Cobra, and we f you find out that Abby Chase um, has infiltrated Cobra. Um, neither group knows of each other's existence, and uh, so through a series of events, Danger Girl and GI Joe are basically teaming up to. Uh, to take down Cobra, so just pretty much what you would expect. So it, it's pretty good. I, like I said, I, I'd probably wait for the trade to come out and check it out. But uh, yeah, there we go. That's what's up. That's what's up. All right. Um, for me, we got Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 15. This is all right. Yeah, you know, this, this is uh to me, this is the weakest issue of the series of the of the relaunch. It's cool, you know. What I mean, it, I, I want the I I get the annual probably sometime this week. I was gonna probably ask. I was gonna ask if you were gonna get the. I might. I, I might get the annual because of because since it's a complete, it's a complete Eastman issue, right? Yeah. Yeah. He wrote. You the, know, I, I I don't know. Like uh, this this is no this this I was I was, honestly I was like kind of upset after I got done with this. It's, it's, it's all right, you know. It's you know it's, they did this thing where they tried to super. Like, I'm not very familiar with all the turtles' characters, so yeah, I got to excuse me. But they did this thing where they super mutated a turtle. They had any villains okay. like that back in the day? Um, in the cartoon they did. Okay, well they they super mutated this turtle. And you know they the, the turtles they found out what it was and at the end of the issue you know this is not really a spoiler because nothing really happened. Mikey was uh, left alone with the turtle while everyone else was knocked unconscious. So I mean you know, it it was cool. You know I I wouldn't recommend this though. Okay. But, you know, if you're reading this though, I, I would say get it because you know there's always stuff going on in this book. But you know it is what it is. So not as good as the previous stuff. Not nearly as good as <laughs> an off issue. An off issue. Let's see. Like, yes, yeah. And, okay, so we also have something I actually read this week. Was I've got to remember which number it was? Just a second. Witchblade one sixty one. 
See, I, I, I almost got this. I was close. It's it's That's... it's it's a good one off issue. If you kind of want to see the thing with Witchblade, <coughs> and Witchblade's kind of hard because as someone that was reading it before, excuse me, um, it was written by Ron Martin. It was written by the guys we 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 gushed about with artifacts, and now you have Seely, who is the creator of Hack and Slash, if you ever read Hack and Slash, and I like Hack and Slash. I love Hack and Slash. Yes, Hack and Slash is really good. I I trade it, but it's 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 good good stuff. Um, particularly as someone that was a Buffy fan, it's kind of a kind of a darker version of Buffy. Um, the the art in it though is kind of jarring because you're so used to this painted digital just amazing art and now it's very very superhero esque art um the the stories are very supernatural in content even more so than they were before so and not that the book's bad i would say the book's still good um if 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 you like it and and they're still kind of setting up a lot of stuff um this was definitely kind of an in between issue where sarah is helping out a doctor who is feels like she's being haunted and kind of this and the story is actually pretty good you find out that that she is being haunted and who's haunting her and why and how that has to do with sarah and uh and some stuff that has happened to sarah in the past where sarah went to this uh, other dimension where this other Witchblade bearer went to that was kind of, it would kind of be like she went to World of Warcraft is basically the, the, the simplest way to put it. Um, this, this dimension of magic and she came back because she was, she was, she was following a ghost. And so this is kind of a follow up to that and some of, some of the things that we learned in that issue. So, but this is definitely a issue I would say to check out if you kind of want to see, how Witchblade is, I would definitely say that of the of the three main Top Cow books, this is now the weakest, where it was the strongest. <coughs> I still would say it was good because Artifacts is is amazing and um, Darkness, which I got caught up on, I'll talk about it in a little bit, um, is actually really really good. So there is that. So there you. Yeah, that's what the guy in my store was telling me. He was like. You read artifacts. You can't read this. I was like, okay. <laughs> he says, he says, he says, he says it's such a big drop off. He says, it's still good, but it's such it, a huge. Yeah, drop off. it's 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 a big drop off, and that's and and the fact that Seely just kind of went in a different direction than Ron Mars was going to, so that's kind of jarring too. It's still good, and I think they knew when when they went when they did artifacts that Witchblade would kind of fall off, and in a lot of ways. She's kind of in the background, which she kind of needs to be if you kind of follow the story of Artifacts, because she needs to kind of be away for a while until we get to the big, you know, the big revelation when she when she figures out everything. And then I think she'll be a much, much bigger character to the series. Cause I like, can't wait for that. <laughs> oh, my God. Some shit is going to go down. <laughs> That's, that's, oh my, that 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 is that is gonna be crazy. Like cause she, cause she she fell for Jackie again, and then he broke her heart again. <laughs> Except this time even more so than than yeah. Oh my lord, man. Oh yeah. oh my oh god. Yeah. W- would you say that's coming out? Um, I wouldn't be shocked if it's issue twenty five. Man, it oh might God. not be, it might not be, but I'm thinking that's probably going to be issue 25 is probably when they're going to, when, yeah, when, when the, we're going to get that. The guy at my store, he told me, he was, if you read anything else besides artifacts, just read the darkness. He said, don't even touch Witchblade. I was like, damn. Yeah. <laughs> it has not, and I mean, like he said, it's good. It just, it really doesn't play into the other, like the stuff that's going in in darkness I'll, I'll just start talking about darkness. The the thing that's because I got caught up on it too. Um, the thing with darkness is that it's definitely Jackie kind of losing control of the thing that he created. Um, 
there is uh, he's basically split himself don't ask how he's basically split himself from the darkness where now they are two he still can control the darkness but the darkness is now a, a, a different entity okay which is something that yeah he he the, the darkness is kind of a different it's like a he's like a clone of Jackie but Jackie can control him except that he's losing control of the darkness and Oh, so you're saying Jackie can just go around living and it's like this other yeah. guy that can be the darkness. Right, right. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. okay. Except that he's losing control of it like he walked in on the darkness and Jenny having sex. Um, oh, Jesus. He, uh, Hope can do weird things when with the darkness. She has like these kitty cats that that were born from like a dead cat that are like darklings. Kind of. Okay. It's kind of odd, and she can do like things. You, you're starting to see that she has powers, which they kind of hinted at before, because in before Artifact, she was like maybe two, and now she's what like five or six. You know, so she's aged, and and Jackie's kind of losing, like he he wants complete control. He wants everything he always wanted, and he's kind of losing that step by step. So, which definitely plays into artifacts because in a lot of in a lot of ways, Jackie is kind of the villain, but uh, Tom Judge has to kind of. You know, he has to do the stuff with the FBI, but he's also looking for the other artifacts as well. And he hasn't found them all yet. And apparently we're not going to get them all, because if you don't know, Top Cow is doing a, uh, a talent search. And part of the talent search is take any any of the artifacts and make up a story and you can an, an origin if you want. And you can go completely off the wall crazy because they rebooted the universe and said, do whatever the hell you want and we'll take the best one and we will actually give you a job and publish it. So there you go. But anyways, so yes, that's the darkness. So I'm done. Yeah, that's, that, that's that star you see on all those issues. The talent search thing. Yeah. Is that what it is? Yeah. Okay. Talent, yeah. For writers, for writers and artists. Josh, you should submit something. I've thought about it, um, but every time I have tried to plan out a comic, I've never been able to do it because I can't think like I can't write it so that a artist would be able to, you know what I mean? You feed off what you wrote. Yeah, kind of feed off what I wrote because I write very. <clears throat> I write probably what would be good for comics, but I write very wordy as far as as far as far dialogue, and I'm afraid I would put too much dialogue in it, which would cover up too much of the art. But that was funny when I, I talked to Peter David at Dragon Con, and he was like, I don't like when people say that this this guy wrote a bad comic. He said, because it's really hard to write a comic. Just say he wrote an unfulfilling comic. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was hilarious. It is. Well, you have to think. I mean, I can... I could, I mean, I could sit here and give me three hours, and I could, you know, I, I could, I could write a story, but to do it in a way that you can do it so that an artist can feed off of it, and then go back and do, you know, and try to figure out, okay, where can I put the dialogue I want to put in? That's that's not easy. So, is that because if you write a comic book, that's hard in itself. So, yes. you know, I, I kind of agree with him on that. I mean, that's why Stan Lee just let the guys. Let the guys do it. If you don't know, this is how he wrote. Um, let the guys do it. Then went back and would fill in the dialogue completely. So like Kirby and Ditko would would they would basically tell the stories they would want to tell. They would give it to Lee, and then Lee would fill in basically the words. In, you know, Josh, I have one request when you refer to Kirby and Ditko. Call them God and Muhammad, please. God and Muhammad. <laughs> Jack, Jack Kirby is. And, and, anyway, it, it's my go. We'd be here all night. I'd be just okay. gushing. But okay, okay. Yeah. But anyway, so that's that. Um, <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> um, <laughs> I wanted to talk about Avengers Spider-Man Annual Number One. This is great. 
This is awesome. This is what I'm talking about, Marvel, Marvel Comics, and your, uh, your, 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 what is it, Avenging Spider-Man or whatever it's called. Uh, oh, uh, Superior uh, Spider-Man. I'm, no, yeah, yeah, what? Well, yes, yeah, Superior Spider-Man. Yeah. Oh my! What, what, th- see, this is what Spidey needs to be. This is a Spider-Man and the Thing story that is hilarious and fun all the way through, see, from start to finish. See, I saw that. I had not read it. But I didn't haven't gotten it because I'm actually gonna get the floppy of that, so I haven't gotten went and gotten it yet. But yeah, I wanted to get it because I saw that it was Spidey. I saw it was Thing. There is literally nothing better, nothing better than when they are together. Him, him and uh, Johnny. Yes. No, this is bad because because him and Johnny are just being dicks to each other for the most part. I, I like when him and Wolverine are together too. That's good shit. Uh, it's the uh, that wasn't him and She Hulk was better than him and Wolverine. Nah, you know, you know, Josh. A lot of people would disagree with you on that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but, but. but this is this is awesome though. Like, this is this is so just like it's, it, at the very beginning, I knew I was gonna love this because Spidey was like they out loud and he and he is that an Eminem song because he he thought like something and he was like that, that sounds like an Eminem track. He said, either that or I'm using the word yo and I'm starting to worry about myself. <laughs> like, I, I, just at that moment, I was like, the whole issue is just, it, this, is what, this is what I'm talking about. This right here. This series is, is exactly what Spidey should be. When they, they, they've done stories that have gone off of more than one issue, but they've all been, like, the thing is, the focus is the fun. I mean, it's not a bunch of overly adult themes in it. You know, it's not. You know, it's it's just a fun comic. It, it's it. You know, I mean, you can pick it up and enjoy it. If you've never read a comic before, you can pick up an issue of this book and enjoy it. They they the first one was the the Red Hulk, and that was great. That's the only. That's the for the first time. I won't say the only time. The because I liked him on a new cartoon, but uh, like you know, it's one of the only times I ever liked the Red Hulk. You know what I mean? And that Captain America story they did, the Hawkeye story. This book is so great, so great, and 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 it, it pains me. It pains me that this is just not what they do with the main book because this is this is just, this is what it should be. It's so much just ah ah, it bothers me. It bothers me so much. This is great though. Y'all all should get this. It's so great. You're, you're uh, so. Here's my question about that. You're griping about it, okay? Right. You're you're griping about it. Yeah. But but now, who writes that book again? Dan Slott writes that book. And who writes the the regular the regular oh, Spider Man? Oh, oh, are you talking about talking about? Are you talking about Avengers Spider Man? Yeah. They've had so many writers, man. It's like oh, it's they crazy. just so, oh, they just they 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 all three for all. Oh. Yeah, and, and any and anyone that has wrote this is just you know, you know it's like it's it's good because it's a formula. You know, what I mean, you don't have to you don't have to try that hard. <laughs> I mean, like it's Spidey with someone else write them just having fun, and that that's all it is. Dan Slott, you know, I you know I like to do, I respect him. You know, what I mean, I, I won't even say Amazing Spider Man is bad because it's not bad. It's just. It, it 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 doesn't feel like Spider Man. It just doesn't. And ha- and part of that isn't his fault, to be real with you. But like, is I, yes. I I I I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't get it. I understand. Because like, because part of that is Marvel's fault by just totally just destroying Peter. So <laughs> tell us what. And you I ain't even and I ain't even the biggest sp- fan of Spider Man. It's just you know it's sad. It is sad. It's funny that you sound like me. It's, it's 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 crazy, Josh. It's crazy. It's why it's why I can't read Spider Man. And like I said, I've said before, you know, that was the first real superhero book I really got into was Spider Man. And it's just it it and and the thing is, I see people defend everything that people don't like about Peter now. I see creators defend it, saying, "Well, you need you need Aunt May to still be alive." I'm like, "No, you don't." No, I guess you do because he needs to be grounded. I said, you couldn't just keep him married to Mary Jane, and Mary Jane couldn't ground him. I mean, what? I mean, this this it makes it makes like like, like if if they're not married, Mary Jane should be dead. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it just doesn't make it. It's stupid. Why is she alive and they're not together? It doesn't make sense. Yeah, I agree. I agree. 
<laughs> but if you if you're gonna do that, fine. Just kill her. <sighs> Anyways, okay. So let's get on to better things. Something else I read. Something I reread this this past week because I've read it before, and I love it and its greatness, which is the first trade to Thunderbolts. Oh, the, is, uh, the Busick trade? Yes. That is awesome. That is, that is, has one of the best first issues ever, where you, it reveals who, who the Thunderbolts really are, which oh, is, God. Uh, <laughs> oh, one, one of the most iconic moments in comic book history. If you've like never that. read this, this is, this is, this is just, of, of everything that was horrible about, about, um, the aftermath of, uh, Onslaught, we will not go into the aftermath of Onslaught. <laughs> <laughs> I will just call it the aftermath of Onslaught before Marvel realized what a bad idea it was. This was awesome. Um, if you don't know, this is this is the, how Thunderbolt started. Um, you you want to ruin the reveal? You want to ruin? The- uh, no, I won't re- ruin the reveal. I will just say that what happened was is the Fantastic Four. Uh, Captain America, the Hulk, Iron Man, Thor? Yes, Thor. Thor, all of those type of people got killed by Onslaught. So without the Fantastic Four, this group shows up and basically decides they're going to take over for the Fantastic Four and call themselves the Thunderbolts. And no one knows who these people are because they just magically show up. And once you find out who they are, it is a big kind of uh, what? Because it, it, it's someone that like of all people, like this 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 person that leads them. What? <laughs> yes. Once you find out who they are, it's a very big what. And then and then the story kind of goes from there. Um, so, and, and I would say that probably the closest I think that it's been since Busick left was when, uh, Warren Ellis was writing it and then, I didn't read any of that. And then, uh, oh, that's good stuff. And then, um, where, where, where the Busick stuff is much more a classic superhero, you know, him doing Avenger type stories. Uh, my, minus that first issue. That that's just that's something else. <laughs> it, no, 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 I'm just saying though. But it's still good stuff. Um, after he leaves, it kind of just, and then Warren Ellis comes along and he takes it and you know into Warren Ellis land, and um, and I, I would say that that up until they changed it to basically being the Dark Avengers. That's probably the closest the you know from the original team. So you know, because because that new team, I have no love for that new. Who that is it? New it's, team. It's, it's Ragnarok, it's, Scar, right? And, Scar. Um, let's see, Scar. Uh, Electra. I, I I don't. I know. can't. I can't. A bunch of people and the Punisher. Oh God! I I still I can't believe why like yo yo I, they they better explain. That's all I gotta say. They better no, explain. it's not Scar. It's Red Hulk. Oh, you're Red Hulk. Because bad. It, they, cause it's they, he's the leader. Because yeah, they they better explain. That's all I that's all I got to say. I I we will see. I I don't know. But anyways, yes. If you oh met- oh I I do have one more. I forgot. By the way, but go ahead. Well, one more from last week. I forget. All right. Um, this, this, if you've never read this and I had not read it forever because I, I think I, I may have read the first couple of issues back in the day and then, um, stopped reading it for whatever reason. This was also during, this also came out during the time period where I wasn't reading many comics, particularly Marvel and DC stuff. So, but, um, I definitely would recommend going and checking it out. Um, yeah, uh, cause I love Kurt, I love me some Kurt music, so. Man, I, I want to just tell y'all, like, but I, I won't do that. Like that, like I, I'll be, I'll be a hundred percent honest with you. Minus the, the if you ever read Infinity Gauntlet, minus um, Thanos head butting the Hulk. 
I can come out. You, you got to read that. Minus that, uh, the the reveal on that last on the, well towards the end is the my favorite comic book moment of all time. Like y'all, oh my god. Well, that Batman getting his back, bro. It's like top five, but that that is just that blue. As a kid, that that blew me. Like being a kid reading what happened at the end of that, you. Oh my! Oh my God! Oh, you have to it, understand, this team is meant to take over the Avengers and the Fantastic Four. And of all teams to do it, the, the, <laughs> oh my! Moving on, moving on, move, moving on, moving on. From from last week, something I forgot. Punisher War Zone number one. This is awesome. This is that. That's what I was thinking about. This is my pick of last week. This book is awesome. This is awesome. Awesome awesome if y'all don't know the the last issue of the main punisher book that greg rucker was writing props to this dude by the way as i said in the last video him jason aaron and garth are the only people i ever want to see write punisher if there's anyone else i'm not gonna read the shit but like if you if you know how it ended um the punisher and the ex-cop chick i forget her name they got framed for killing three three policemen, and then uh, now the Punisher's on the run. Like the police ain't even giving him no, you know, no, uh, like you know, usually they give Punisher leeway because you know he kills the criminals and you know the you know makes the cops life easier. But he got framed for killing these policemen. You know what I mean? So the 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 policemen want him. You know they they want him caught too. And Spider Man confronts him. Like him and Spider Man get in this epic fight, and then Spider Man he goes to the Avengers match and he tells the Avengers that uh. You know, we need we need to um we need to catch the Punisher, do something about him now. We can't just, you know, throw him in jail, you know, because that's like that's like putting a kid in a candy store, you know what I mean? <laughs> so, you know, he he was like, you know, we we all have to do something. And uh that you know, that's basically the story, but like the the, the just the, the fight between Punisher and, and Spider Man. That, that's what sold this book. This book is awesome. This is this is just this is just great. This is great. The art is great. Spidey is great in this because Spidey's like going overboard, like you know, because his life is already hard. You know, people don't people don't like him already, and he don't go around killing people. And he was like, you know, it, it was like genuine anger and hatred. You know, what I mean, towards Frank. It, it, it's it's great. It's it's great. It is yeah. It's great. <laughs> it is great. And and, and and I love at the end of the book, and I'm gonna ruin this that uh. They're, all the Avengers are they're, they're sitting at a table, and Steve's like, you know, you're right. We know we we got to do something about the Punisher. You can't be involved with this, Pete, because you know you 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 already have a vested interest in this. And like Wolverine's there, and then he just leaves. He doesn't say a word at the meeting, and he goes and meets with Frank first, and he tells him that you know, hey, they're coming for you, brother. And, <laughs> and, then, and, then, and then Frank's like, you know. Frank's like, are you here, you know, to, to fight me or whatever? He's like, no, I'm just here to warn you. We go way back. You know what I mean? We kind of agree on things like that, you know, stuff like that. I don't want to see you get hurt. You know, just, you know, destroy this bunker because they, they know this base. You know what I mean? You need to move on. Just know they're coming for you, and you probably won't hear from me again. <laughs> you know, I, I just, I, I, it's little shit like that, man. I, I really, really like this book. Really like this book. Seriously. That was great. You sold me on it. Josh, that book, you, yeah. I think even you would like that. Even I would like that? Yeah, that, that that's good stuff. That, that was good stuff. I liked it. I, li- I used to ha- used to read the old Punisher magazine <laughs> back in the day. I did. I liked Man, it you, better you, than you the comic. You are old. You are old. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I liked it better than the comic. The Punisher magazine, boy, you, yeah. you you're just old. Hey, I used to read that and um, what King Conan? Yeah, that was the other magazine. <laughs> <laughs> this man is ancient, yo. He's ancient. Just saying, King, King Conan, Josh. King yeah, because that was because Conan was the comic, and then King Conan was the because it was it was a little more adult. Nah, I know, Josh. I know. Nate, Nate's gonna tell me you read heavy metal. You gonna do that? I did. I did used to read heavy metal. <laughs> just, just go, Josh. You got any more? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, a, another book that I, I I contemplated on if I should say if I read it this week because I I found it buried wherever I buried it and I read it 
because I do like the book. The book just makes me very angry. And that book is Battle Chasers. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> so if you don't know about this book, this book came out many moons ago. This book was done by Joe Mad. This is why this book is why people now hate Joe Mad. Okay. Not because the book sucked. Not because the book didn't sell well. The book was awesome. The book was great. But Joe Mad decided he'd much rather play with video games than finish the fucking story. <laughs> okay. This is this this was probably the first fantasy type book to really take off in a very long time. Um, it's it's a really good story, um, and I have the nice hardcover that I bought. Yes, I bought it last year because I, I wanted it, because I really do like the story, and I do somewhere, even though I know I shouldn't, I know I shouldn't think like this, I think, you know what, someday he will he will say, you know what, I'm sorry, and he will, he will actually finish the damn story. But I don't think that's possible because he draws so freaking slow now. But yes. But if you ever wonder why people <laughs> hate Joe Mad, if, if, if you ever wonder why people completely despise Joe Mad, it's not because they don't like his art. If they say because they don't like his art, I, I usually call bullshit because I don't believe that. I think it's because of this book. Um, this book, this book, I think, actually turned people off of ever reading indie comics ever again because they were so pissed off that this never got finished. Um, I, I think you might be right. You know, I mean, I mean, you know, you've heard people rant. You've not heard. You've heard other people than just me rant against this. Yeah, yeah, yeah all the time, <laughs> all the time. <coughs> You know, I mean, you you get in a comic shop and you bring up Battle Chasers, just 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 hang on because you're gonna go for a run. I mean, it's not it's not even that. It came out at a period where a lot of indie books were doing that. Right? Yeah, it, I mean, that was yeah. the thing. It was you know, I mean, this and Danger Girl, which I talked about before, um, were notorious for that. Um, Danger Girl eventually got finished, though it took Campbell a long time to finish it. But those were probably the two most prevalent because it wasn't like they were, you know, like they, they, they it wasn't like they ended the story and said, okay, I'm, I'm never coming back to this. I'm done. It's not like that. You like he, they, you got an end to the story because you never got an end to the story. Um, it was left kind of cliffhangerish. Uh, Joe Campbell eventually finished Danger Girl. Took him forever, but he eventually finished it. But yeah, you had all sorts of books like that that were coming out and weren't being finished, or series were started and they were never done. And you know, and I, I think, I think because comic book fans are still fairly old, and there hasn't been any, you know, really any new, uh, you know, the comic book industry has done a horrible job of bringing in, you know, new people. Um, that yeah, it just. You know, people people have a long memory for that. So, but anyways, that's that's my that's that's my discussion on that. So, I think that had a lot to do with the demise of like creator owned books, indie comics, things like that. Like, yeah, because pe people lost faith in them. You know. Yes, I would I would agree with that. I mean, even though nowadays though, you know, it looks like looks like it's the rise again. You know? It is that's what it, it looks like. It looks like it. We'll see. I mean, I'm, and there's lots of good creator-owned books out there, and I will always, you know, I've, I've always given, you know, creator-owned books at least shots, even, you know, the stuff that I get upset with because it doesn't ever get finished. But you know, it is, it is what it is. So what are you gonna do? I mean, agreed. <laughs> agreed. So you got anything else? I got two more books. One is a graphic novel. One is a, a single issue. Um, if y'all don't know, then y'all been living under a rock. Uh, Marvel announced that the sequel to Captain America is Captain America: Winter Soldier. So I went back and read the graphic novel, and um, I'll say this: All right, when I when I first read this, like you know, this is the middle of Brubaker's run. Well, not the middle. It was like, well, like a year in his run. Yeah, like a year in his run. And I was like, you know. 
the bringing back Bucky, you know, a lot, a lot of people, you know, including my buddy here, and yeah. <laughs> were uh, were upset about it. You know, they 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 thought it would be Jason Todd all over again, and it wasn't. And this book it has clear, critical acclaim. Y'all, y'all know, y'all, y'all know. That's the only reason they're making the movie because the, the book was so well loved. But I will say this though, um, I feel like the like even though it's shocking and all that, it is. You know, I, I feel like it's an amazing story. I do, like I truly do. But I feel like it's a little illogical because <laughs> because you really want us to believe that Bucky had been going around killing these people. Yeah, I mean, doing these blackout missions, these undercover missions for all these years, and Steve never knew about it. <laughs> like, I don't. I'm sorry. I just find like I find I find that hard to believe. You know what I mean? Because Steve is, you know, he's mm-hmm. Steve. You know, <laughs> it's just I just find that hard to believe. But aside from that, though, this book is uh everything under the Red Hood should have been. To be honest with you, like Jason Todd coming back should have been a huge deal. And Winter Soldier felt like a huge deal. And that, that's all, like, if you do something like this, if you do something like this, you have to, A, have an idea, not just be going with the flow like Judd Winnick did. And I, I I have so many problems with that book, if y'all can't tell. But, but uh, you know, you have to have an idea. But but you like the movie. Yeah, I like the movie, but, you know, it's you know, it's one of those DC movies. Come on, you know. I'm just saying. <laughs> And, but the the book is so long, and it just seems just so. Yo, the book nothing. is for yeah. That the story goes. I mean, I had no idea, and I looked it up, and I'm like, oh my fucking god! <laughs> After seeing the movie, because the movie is just like you know, shows up, does his thing, you find out, tries to kill the Joker. There we go. Doesn't doesn't you don't know if he's alive or dead? That's all yes. you need. That's all, all you, you need. And then the comic is like, shows up. Kind of shows up, shows up again. Okay, who is he? Oh, we think it's this guy. Well, maybe it's this guy. Oh no, it's this guy. Oh yes, it is Jason. Okay, now he's not going to show up for a while. Nothing's really, you know. I mean, it was just dragged out. For I, so, I, I, I like that they had. I like that they had mystery behind it, though. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that. I mean, you were kind of like, okay, who is it? Who is it? Who is it? And then. <coughs> I thought the reveal was weak, though. Yes, you know, because under, it was uh, like, oh, well, you know who I am. You just don't want to admit it. Oh, shut up. But but when when a soldier is totally different, like when you like you know when Cap realizes it's Bucky, like you know it kind of just shatters his whole world. You know what I mean? Like that that moment that this book is the 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 book itself is great. I just feel like there's some logic holes in it. You know what I mean? I like I love the ending too, and um. I just, you know, I, I would wholeheartedly recommend this, especially before the movie comes out. So, you know, I, I feel like if they, ch- like, you know, kind of take out, you know, some characters saying that, well, Falcon's going to be in it, so never mind. But, you know, you, you actually don't have to do that then. But, um, so they, they announced Falcon, right, for the movie, right? Yeah, yeah, the, he's yeah, going to so be in it. I can't remember who they said was going to be, who he was going to be, but, yeah, they, they said he would be in it, so. Yeah, so, you know, I guess you don't have to do that, but you can you can just do the book, like as the movie, and, and you'd be fine. <laughs> like he, like you'd be fine. Like the, the, you know, I felt like you know this was a huge moment. This was one of those moments you go back and look, and like it really shattered Cap's world. You know, what I mean, kind of like when the Avengers match and got raided. Uh, remember that, Josh? And remember, um, uh, you remember that, right? Yeah. U.S. agent, you know all that. So it's one of these type, one of those type deals. You know what I mean? And under the red hood, Jason coming back just kind of didn't feel like See, that. I, true, but I, I think the other part is is I don't know that that was I think that's my big thing with is you already had U.S. agent, you have Nomad somewhere, I, no one knows I guess where he is now, um, but yeah, it just it I don't know it it was just it was like really. I, you really? felt like it didn't need to happen. I didn't, right, I didn't feel like it need. You, you had, <coughs> you had like all of this other stuff. <coughs> you had all of these, you know, you had the whole Punisher thing that they had been setting up. It seemed like that then didn't go anywhere. So, I'm just saying though, like the the, the I'm just saying like if you do this though, it needed to be like this. Or it needed to be your idea. You want to tell the people your idea? 
<laughs> oh, my idea? Okay, here's my idea of how you bring back uh, Bucky. You basically say that when the plane went down, Bucky never died. Um, and he, who he was found by was Hydra. Now, this isn't movie Hydra. This is, this is comic book Hydra, which is different from movie Hydra because they, you know. Um, and, or what would late, what would end up becoming Hydra? And eventually, Bucky becomes the head of Hydra. And you don't know it because for, you, have they ever actually said who the real head of Hydra is? Well, no, I mean, you got, like, people they, they, they say is, like, the leader of Hydra, but you really don't know. Okay, yeah. anyways, that... No, you got people Captain like America, Hydra. Yeah, 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 yeah. you have Captain America and uh, Nick Fury finally, through some weird thing, get to where they're going to finally find out who the head of Hydra is. And this guy starts talking to him, and they can't see who it is, and they're like, well, how, you, you act like you know us. And he turns around, and he goes, goes I have, he goes, I might be that old, but you don't even recognize my voice, and you realize that it's Bucky, and that Bucky is the head of Hydra. That That's that's nuts. Like, you know, if we didn't get Winter Soldier, I'd be all for that. <laughs> I'd, be all, I'd be all for that. <laughs> well, that's like my, when the... When that's my only gripe, my well, my my biggest gripe, other than some other things, but when you take the whole Batman, Nightfall, and Night Quest story all all together, my real big gripe is that the way that they treated Dick, because I really felt like Batman should have been broken. Um, Batman should have went to Tim, said you need to call Dick. Dick should have came in. He should have said you need to, you need to be Batman because Gotham City needs a Batman. And Dick should have said no, I'm not becoming you and walk out. And then he has to go to John Paul and say, okay, I need you to be Batman because there has to be a Batman. And only after Dick sees what John Paul becomes does he agree to become Batman. Which is kind of what they wound up doing, but I think you needed that him refusing to be Batman instead of the little throwaway line they had, which was, well, if I asked you to be Batman, you would have said, would you really have said yes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. and I was like, what the fuck? Really? Yes. I, I, th I think they should have had him be the one to defeat John Paul. I think it should have been yeah. Dick. Yeah, I, I think you should have been, and he becomes Batman and and do the, you know. Do the whole thing. I think it would have. I think it would have worked. I think it would have worked out very well. So, but, but you know, what do I know? I I, I agree. What do you know? Now I'm playing. <laughs> um, but but yeah, Winter Soldier, great great book. Um, and I in the single issue that came out, that was like uh, the one that came out this past week, this current week. It was good too. But uh, I want to talk about this damn series that people beat me over the head to read and that's happy number one by grant morrison I, no no did you, like, uh, how did huh? you give in I, I gave in because everyone around me was like i know you don't like morrison that's how they, that's how they, that's how the senate started i know you don't like morrison but this is different and it is i will say it's different but this is the case where I kind of wish he was Morrison. <laughs> like, to be honest with you, <laughs> like this, like the first issue was nothing, like nothing, yeah. like people, like. No, did, did you read this, John? Did you read this? No, I've not read that. I think the last thing I read bef besides um, Action Comics number one was uh, what is it? What's the name of it? Man of Strength and Mystery, or Muscle and Mystery, Metallo, or. The hell? The hell is that? Uh, but no, I have not read it. I will look up what I'm talking about, and you can talk about that, and I will tell you what I'm talking about. So nothing, no, nothing happens. I, I'm, I'm not sure what it's about because I don't care. Like, <laughs> like, like this, this, this book is boring. Like, it's boring as hell. And I saw it was getting like, like this, this is this, this is about to be a rant. So buckle up. <laughs> um. Uh, motherfuckers need to stop, okay? It, it, it is now at the point where, like, these fanboys let these creators live off their reputation. 
Like, I'll be 100% real with you. Gar- Garth Ennis is my favorite writer of all time. But if he started to suck, I would stop reading him. I mean, or not even that. Moore- but, but you and me have both had discussions with people who are not who are not Garth Ennis fans. And we yeah. completely understand why they don't like you. <laughs> like, if I tell someone I'm not the biggest fan of Grant Morrison, well, what's wrong with you? He's one of the, like, that ever happened to you, Jeff? What's wrong with you? I, and, and then I explain why. He was like, well, you, you just don't understand comics. Like no, 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 it's not that at all. I do understand comics. Maybe you don't. Seriously. <laughs> like, and, and don't get me wrong. I'm not saying the dude's not talented. He, I, he, Come on now. The dude's been writing comics what? 30 years now, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, he's talented. You know what I mean? Some of the best books of all time, you know, some of the most acclaimed books of all time come from this man. I'm not saying he's not talented. I'm just saying his style just doesn't suit me. It's like you don't know what you're – like the thing is when you read Mark Wade, when you read Kurt Busiek, when you read – Countless others, Alan Moore, whoever else. You kind of have an idea what you're going to get coming into it. With Grant Morrison, you have no idea. Like, this this could be just anything, you know? <laughs> Look at Action Comics. Like, for as weird as he is, did y'all, did y'all expect it to get that nuts? <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, it's, like, it's, you, know, you, you know what I'm saying, Josh? It was, like, I totally com- different I from what everyone thought. I completely agree. No, the comic I was talking about, yeah, it's, it's Flex Metallo, Man of Muscle and Mystery. That was the last thing of his I read. So and that was good because that was that was that was him being weird and wacky and 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 I can live with that um, because it was in a it was in a situation where it could be but no I I don't get it I tell people that and they look at me I tell other people that like like for example the guy that owns my comic shop because he's actually younger than me um, he completely gets it when I say that because he's like yeah I know what you mean. And I'm like, I don't, I don't understand. And, and he's like you, he says, you know, he's just living off of, uh, past glory. It's, it's, it's like the people who, you know, still will, will buy a Bendis book because it's a Bendis book, which I, no, this don't. is not Daredevil. This is not 2002. This is not the same, it's not you know, the same it's, guy. It's, it's, it's like, <laughs> not the same dude. It's like, what, what is, you know. Or, or the people who, and I, I know a guy, he's a friend of mine that in Houston is still this way. He will buy anything Chris Claremont writes. Anything. Why? Why? No idea. I'm like, what the fuck is this, wrong this with This ain't, you? this ain't the late eighties. This ain't like, the late seventies. Like he's, 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 he's not nearly as good as, you know, he once was. He hasn't, it's like, what the, you know, but you know. But anyways, you know, but I also know people who, you know, they hate Astonishing Sp- uh, X-Men, too. So because yeah, I, love- I, I, I don't actually like that as much as everyone else, because, well, this is why, because they they really liked Grant Morrison's new X-Men. OK, and I always find it this way. The people that didn't like new X-Men by the time it ended are the people who really like Astonishing X-Men and the people who who really liked new X-Men the whole way through are the people that don't like astonishing X-Men because astonishing X-Men is very much, you know, the same type of story, the same type of X-Men, the X-Men basically, you know, do, being the classic X-Men. And I think people wanted that after new X-Men. I, so. I, I would definitely agree with that. I, I, to, to, to be honest with you though, new X-Men, like they should have borrowed a, a page out of DC's book. And just made out of Elseworlds comic. Because <laughs> wasn't that an Elseworlds comic? Didn't that feel like an Elseworlds it book? It felt completely like, like an Else. After, after, um, after, uh, the, after, when, when Professor X's sister, when was the, was that the third story arc when they finally finished that? Yeah. No, 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 it wasn't. Was it? I don't think so. I can't remember. Whichever story. I, thought, it wasn't, I know it wasn't that deep into it. I know yeah, that because yeah. they. Yeah. Don't, but after, let's not after, forget Zorn. Don't forget Zorn. <laughs> you know. Remember Zorn, Josh? Yeah, Remember? but apparently that wasn't his fault. Apparently that was editorial's fault, but whatever. Whatever. <laughs> But just, but yeah, I, I ain't got nothing else, Josh. I'm done. <laughs> I'm 
I'm finished too. That was all that I. That was pretty much everything. I read a lot, but nothing, nothing really new. So. Yeah, but as as I said though, happy. I don't get it. I'm not. I wasn't happy with that. It was. It like I, I really expected him to just be Bendis. I mean Bendis. Well, uh, Morrison. Like, you know, because you look at the cover, I'm like, oh, this is gonna be something weird, and it's just it's just boring. I don't know. <laughs> I, I I I you know you have all of these people though that are saying they're gonna do, you know, they're all excited for his multiverse story in the DC because uh, he's. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah. I'm like, really? Didn't you? Aren't you one of the architects that tried to kill that, and then you brought it back, and then? Uh, like, why, why y'all want? Why y'all want him to do events? Like, see, I don't understand. Why? Why y'all want? That's that not happen? even an event. It's just a thing that he wants to do. Of course, this is the same guy who bitched and moaned because because you know Marvel and DC, you know, want their books to come out on time and. His buddy, who he likes to do stuff with, can't get books done on time, so he doesn't want to do mainstream books anymore. So, oh, you talking about uh, what's his face, my guy? Yeah, um, yeah. I can't think. Of his uh, name. God damn, uh, uh, because uh, I don't really like him that much. So, uh, uh quietly, quietly. Yeah, quite. Yeah. Damn boy, what the brain fart. <laughs> but, but yeah, I, 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 I. I don't like him that much. It's like Josh, Josh, you're crazy. You're crazy. It's it's very nice, and I think the last thing I saw of his, which was the story in Neil Gaiman's um, the Endless, the Endless hardcover he came out with. Oh, was, yeah, I remember that. Was 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 really 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 good, and I really really liked it. Um, but, but that was like, I don't know how long he had. I, I know he worked on that for a long time, and it was only like a like a five page story, and it looked really nice. And it was definitely something like you know not what he. It doesn't look like his normal stuff, which to me everything just looks too much the same. You know what I mean? Well, yeah, I, you know people say that about Steve Dillon. Yes, that Steve Dillon's <laughs> the same way. I I I, I kind of see your point. I I feel like I, I will say this: a lot of the women do look the same. The quietly draws. I give you that. Like the yeah. women look, yeah. Like it's like his new X Men run. Like all the chicks pretty much look the same. I give you that. I give you that. It's like okay. I mean, it's pretty. It's it's very detailed and it looks really nice. But I'm like, eh, can't we get Dale Keown? He does really detailed art and takes forever to do it, and it looks better in my opinion. So. What are you gonna do? People like what they like, so yeah, that's the problem. You know, I I I do want to I do a, a comic I have not been able to find yet, and I think I'm gonna have to go to the other comic book store to find it. Is Vampirilla versus Fluffy the Vampire Slayer? What? <laughs> you not seen this? No. Okay, it's a parody that they did, that Dynamite's doing with Vampirilla. It's a Vampirilla book, and they're basically teaming her up with a parody of Buffy, and they're, she's called Fluffy the Vampire Slayer. That, that's hilarious, because isn't she a vampire? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> that's hilarious. But she's a good vampire. That's the oh, whole... yeah, oh, yeah, like like Angel, her, her little boy. <coughs> yeah. yeah, except, you know. It's, 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 but yeah, so that's what I want to see. Oh, I do have something I want to talk about. One oh, thing. here we go. Here we go. Okay. And, 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 and this is a two-parter. Okay. So in Geekdom yesterday, Geekdom kind of went crazy because. Oh yeah. I forgot about this. Yeah. Yeah. Because George <laughs> Lucas sold everything to Disney. And people, and then Disney announced in 2015. I feel so far. I feel so sorry for DC. I really do. Um, <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I don't. Go ahead, Josh. I'm sorry. <laughs> they're going to release a new Star Wars movie. Okay. So geekdom went crazy. You had some people that said, "Thank God," because you know George Lucas won't be doing 
a Star Wars movie, which I kind of agree with. And you had other people that were like, oh my god, you know, they're gonna they're gonna ruin it, they're gonna do this, they're gonna do that, blah 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 blah. Okay. Here 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 is my deal with this. So my big question was this is what I said. Sucks to be Dark Horse Comics right now. Because if you don't know, Dark Horse is basically being kept alive and they're able to do some of the books they're able to do that don't make money because of Star Wars. Well, if you don't know, um, before Disney bought Marvel, Disney had Boom doing uh, Darkwing Duck and but, yeah, all, doing those, all uh, of their books. Ducktales and all that. As soon as that was done, they that contract was done. They pulled everything, including the back issues, <coughs> and gave it to Marvel. So the question is. And this was my question: so What the fuck's going to happen to Dark Horse when when the contract goes out? So, our good friends at Comic Book Resources interview the president of Dark Horse Comics, and they say nothing's changing. We have a good relationship with with the, with it, um, you know, and we still have the rights. At no point during this interview do they ask the question: Yes, but when do the rights run out? This is what I don't like about most of the comic book sites. They don't ask questions like this. They don't ask, oh, you're doing this, but how is this going to bring in new readers? You're doing this, but how is this going to bring in young readers? Hey, Marvel, DC, how come your, your readership keeps going down, yet youth sales and regular print books are currently at an all-time high? Okay, I mean, what, what, yee, you know, what, what's with the, so yes, I, I hate the comic book news sites for this reason, because they never, ever ask these questions. Um, I know part of it is, is that, you know, there's questions that the companies don't want to ask, but at some point you do need to ask in some way, even in a friendly way, some of these 